What should I do on my first line? Okay, I'm gonna expand the heck out of this. Okay, so why do you expand? When I expand, how else did you do? I just said sine x plus cos x to the power of. No. Okay, so let's let's give this a go, right? Now, E12. The reason why. <laughs> The reason why I'm going to expand is because, right, if I am integrating something, I'll give you an example, okay? If I integrate something like uh, this, this is the one I, well, I think it was a two, but anyway. If I integrate something like this, this is no problem when I'm doing reverse chain rule, right? Because what I need to do to compensate for this is to uh, multiply and divide by a series of constants, and they're okay. Constants are all good, right? However, if I then ask you to do this, Right? We're kind of in a little bit more trouble because you can't just, like, to compensate here, what's the derivative of the inside function? 6x. It's going to be 6x squared. Now, you cannot multiply or divide by variables because that's changing what's going on. It's like, you know, this all is built upon limits, and it's like taking things in and out of the limits that the limit is kind of dependent on, right? So this is a bit of a problem. You'd have to expand this. And you would have to expand this. Now, in exactly the same way here, I could deal with it as is and do reverse chain rule if I had, say, for this guy, I had the derivative of the inside function. But I do not, right? I have no choice but to expand. However, in this case, as you'll see, it comes out pretty nicely. Right? I'm going to get <coughs> sine squared plus 2 cos sine plus cos squared. Is that OK? That's the perfect square. I can expand this too. What's this? This is minus 2 sine x cos x. And upon noticing this, I've got cancel, cancel, and what else is happening in there? I've got the Pythagorean identity, don't I? So I have the integral of 1 with respect to x, which of course is x. Plus a constant. Okay. Now. Here, <clears throat> here I'm going in the reverse direction. So rather than taking advantage of like expanding things out, I need to unexpand things. I need to say, hey, what's the identity that will compress this into an easier form? Cos squared minus sine squared. That's cos 2x, right? We did this one just now, in fact, right? So if you take this, which is in a disgusting form, and put it into this, which is an easy form, you can say, okay, great. I'm going to take advantage of reverse chain rule, and I'm fine. Okay. Now you get to this guy, okay? And you think, but wait, <laughs> what do I do with this, okay? Um, you don't have, it seems, you don't have the pieces that you need in order to reform this, okay? Now, the clue is actually in the line before. That's kind of why I asked you to do that question, even though it's relatively trivial, okay? Cos 2x is a funny identity. Cos 2x. Because what it lands you on is this. However, you and I know that because of the Pythagorean identity here, which turns this into this, right? Sine squareds and cos squareds, I can exchange, like they're not the same, they're not identical, obviously, but I can exchange them by using that identity. Namely, since sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one, therefore, if I want to get rid of a sine squared or get rid of a cos squared, the way that I would do it is take one over to the other side, like say this, like that, and that allows me to switch it out and use a different identity. So in fact, there are three forms, and I hope you remember this when we first did the double angle identities, there are three forms of this expansion. Okay? The first one is the one that you just used there. Right? This is the standard one. But then from this, you get two other ones based on do you want sine squares or do you want cos squares? Okay? Now in this case, I want cos squares, but let's just rehearse both of them for the sake of it. Here, if I wanted to change everything into sine squared, I would get rid of this by using this. Do you see that? Okay. So this is going to become this is going to become one minus sine squared, and I've got another minus sine squared. So it's going to be one minus two sine squared. So that's fine. If in case I want to do the other thing, which is what I want here, I'm going to instead get rid of this guy. Right? That would mean sine squared is one minus cos squared. So if I sum out this guy. It'd be cos squared, take away one, 
plus cos squared, because there's a double negative happening there, right? So since it's plus, I'm going to get two of them minus one. Does that make sense? Okay, now I'm still not there. I don't have this there. So what am I going to have to do to turn that into this? So I've got some choices. I've got some choices. Um, I can either rearrange here or I can rearrange there. Okay. I think just for this example, I'm going to rearrange here so you can see and I don't cloud the, the integration happening. So if I've got, now maybe you want to write this with me. Okay. This is my new starting point. That 2 cos squared x minus y equals cos 2x. Essentially what I want is cos squared x as a function of cos 2x. Right now I have it in reverse. Okay? So all I need to do is change the subject. That's not hard. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 2. It'll be really cheap while I'm doing it. Okay, there you go. So having written that, I'm going to take advantage of that identity here to integrate this. Okay. So this is going to be the integral of this. I can take that half out, I guess. That's not really relevant. And now I proceed just as I did before. I've done the same integrand like three times today, right? Uh, I've got the half out the front. What does the cos 2x turn into? Yep, a half sine 2x. Sine 2x. And then what does the 1 turn into? Also done this integral just now, right? Uh, that plus c. Okay. Uh, I can simplify a little bit here with the fractions there. It doesn't matter all that much. I suppose I probably do this. But that step is not that important. All the real action has happened up here. Does that make sense? Now, what I encourage you to do, when you encounter questions like this, and you're encountering them all the time, I could have just as easily asked you to do this. Right? In fact, that might be worth doing just now to see if you worked out how that process went. I tended to write this. Like, as a student, I tended to write this. Because I never screwed that up. Right? These two, I sometimes got them in reverse order. I was like, is it 1 minus 2 or 2 minus 1? I always got these wrong if I tried to memorize them. And there were just more things to memorize. Um, so I tended to write this and then do whichever one I needed to based on the question. If your memory is more awesome than mine, then feel free to go ahead and memorize this and go from there. You'll be faster, but if you memorize it wrong, you are in some trouble. Okay?